Hi everyone, Mike from the Excel Trainer here. In this video, an alternative to the still in beta take function. In last week's video, I showed you how to use the take function to return a specified number of rows and columns from either the start or the end of a range. During the week, I heard from a couple of people who wanted to know if there was another way of doing it as they didn't have the take function. And even when take is no longer beta channel users only, many larger companies aren't on the office monthly release cycle, so they might not get the take function for another 12 to 18 months. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo file from the link in the description below. As a quick reminder, this is the English Premier League table and I used the take function to return the top four rows and the bottom three rows from the range A2 to H21. When the data in A2 to H21 updates, so does the data here and here. I'm going to show you an alternative way to get the top four rows and the bottom three rows. The offset function returns the value from a cell that is a specified number of rows and a specified number of columns from a specific cell. So I'll go over to J3. That's where I'm going to type the formula. A1 will be my specific cell or my stake in the ground for the initial formula. And I want to pick up the contents of A2, which is one row down and no columns across. So the formula that I type into J3 is equals offset open brackets. The first parameter is the reference. And this is my starting cell, my stake in the ground. And I said that's going to be A1. The second parameter is the number of rows away from A1 that I want it to look at. And in this case, it's A2 because that's the cell that's got the first team in it. And that is one row below A1. And the third parameter is the number of columns away from column A that I want it to pick up the contents from. And that is zero because I want it to pick up the contents of the cell in column A. That has picked up Man City, which is correct. And then I will manually copy the formula across and copy the formula down. The cell references adjust accordingly. So the first one you can see was offset A1. Then we've got B1, C1 and so on. And we've got A2, B2 and C2. For the relegation zone, it's going to be very similar. Equals offset open brackets. The reference will be A1. And this time, the number of rows down, I want it to start at the 18th row. And I know that because there are 20 rows of data in this table and I want to select rows 18, 19 and 20. So start at the 18th row. I don't want to start any columns in from column A. And enter that in, copy it across and copy it down. So I'm manually copying down three rows and manually copying down four rows on the first example. Now, the disadvantage of doing it this way is the manual copy, making sure I don't copy too many rows and the multiple formulas. Every one of the cells has got a formula in it. In this case, a few formulas isn't going to cause performance issues, but on a bigger scale, it might well do. So for the next demo, I'm going to take advantage of two optional parameters in the offset function. So let's go up to J3 and put equals offset. And again, I'm going to start at A1. That's going to be my starting point, my stake in the ground. I want to reference a cell that is one row below A1 and zero columns away from column A. But I'm going to use the height and the width because I know I always want four rows. I'll type four as the height 
And because I know I always want it to return eight columns, because there's columns A to H, so it's eight columns, I'll put eight as the width. So what I'm saying is start at A1, start at a cell that is one row below and no columns to the right of A1, and generate a range which is four rows and eight columns wide. Now, depending on which version of Excel you're using, when the height and width parameters are specified with the offset function, the offset function becomes a dynamic array function. So it's automatically put a blue border around the range. And as it does with all the dynamic array functions, all of the formulas are grayed out apart from the original one in J3. The benefits of this is there's no need to copy and I only have one formula. For the relegation, that will be very, very similar. So equals offset, start at A1, start by referencing the cell that is 18 rows and no columns away from A1. And this time specify a range that is three rows tall and eight columns wide. We get exactly the same thing. Now that formula is fine when the number of rows in the range is always the same. But what if you had a range where the number of rows changed and you always needed the bottom three rows? Now in this example, it's still 20 rows, but imagine you've got a scenario where the number of rows in the range does change. If that's the case, then my recommendation is to make sure that you convert the data into an Excel table, which I've done. The table is called Teams 4. So I'll go to J11 and use the offset function again, starting at A1. But this time, the starting row is going to be calculated. And it's going to be calculated by taking the number of rows in the table and subtracting two. So if I put rows, open brackets, teams four, teams four being the name of the table, it's counting the number of rows in that table and subtracting two from it. For the columns, Again, I want zero because I want to start at column A, which is what I've specified in the first parameter. And I want three rows and eight columns. So if there's 20 rows in the table, you're starting at row 18. So it selects 18, 19, 20. If there's 50 rows in the table, you're starting at row 48. So it selects 48, 49 and 50. So that's how to use the offset function to grab a specified number of rows from the top or bottom of a list. I say roll on the day when everyone has access to the take function, as I think you'll agree it's much simpler to use. And of course, my method isn't the only way of doing it. Like many things in Excel, there's more than one way to get what you need. If you have any questions or you've used a different method, let me know in the comments below. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and make sure you hit that subscribe button for more. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments. I also have a free weekly newsletter packed with tips to help you become more productive in Excel. And you can sign up for that at theexceltrainer.co.uk. But until the next time, have an excellent day.